In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a page report just like this in Confluence. How does your team articulate their thoughts and ideas? Did you know that a picture is worth a thousand words? Let me introduce you to our exclusive sponsor for our Confluence videos, Gliffy. With Gliffy for Confluence, you can effortlessly create stunning flowcharts, mind maps, wireframes, and so much more, all directly from within Confluence itself. No more jumping to a different application or dealing with clunky integrations. Check out the link in the description below and start a free trial of Gliffy today. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Drop a like if you get value out of this video. And don't forget to check out the description down below as it contains links to my merch store and to my Udemy courses that are available for you. Let's jump into Confluence. Let me show you how to create this really, really cool page properties report. It's not that complicated, although it does involve quite a few steps. And so I wanted to make this video to kind of outline these steps as if you're new to it, the English on Atlassian's documentation is, it's straightforward, but you know how English is, a picture's worth a thousand words. So hopefully this video will serve as a good guide in order to show you how to do this. So let's start with step number one. Okay, so let's start off with step number one. We're gonna create a brand new page and this is going to be a blank page as this is what we're going to want to be using as our as our starting point we're going to give it a title this is my title and then in the body of the page we're going to click on the plus sign here and then we're going to type in page into the search and you'll notice that we have a page properties and a page properties report and in this video we're going to be using both of those but first we're only going to use the page properties so make sure you click on page properties only and that's going to give you a nice little box in here. Now, in order for this to work correctly, you're going to want to put in a table. Keep in mind, you can put text in and out and around this page properties, but really for this to work and, and show it to you the way I just demonstrated to you, you're going to want to put a table. Now, the way this table works is very unique to the page properties. It doesn't really work like a traditional Excel type of table. So you're going to want to make some modifications. And so the first modification you want to do is you want to click on table options here and remove this header row. Then you're going to want to click on that same table options button again, and you're going to want to make a header column. So this is going to work out for you. The next modification you want to do is this triple column is not going to work for us. So we're going to select the column all the way at the end, and we're going to nix that right there. All right, so now we have the foundation to be able to start utilizing the page macro and this structure that I'm showing you right here, that's how you're gonna wanna set it up. Otherwise, you're gonna have a really, really challenging time getting your page properties report to work correctly. So let's keep building on this. So once you have this table formatted correctly, now you're gonna put things on your header column like name, uh, date of birth, um, address, whatever information you want. You can keep tabbing up things here, right? And you can just add like, last name, right, phone number, whatever you want. These are just gonna be, again, totally up to you to define and be able to capture. You can put links to Jira, you can put people, you can put anything you want, it really doesn't matter. And once you have that, then over here, this is where you're gonna put like real people's names, right? So I've just been watching Twisted Metal, so John Doe, top of my mind, and then we'll put Evelyn as, as the address because he lives in his car. All right, and we haven't seen Twisted Metal, highly recommend check out Twisted Metal on Peacock. Not sponsored in any way, shape or form, but we just watched that show. It's really, really good. Especially if you're about my age and you play Twisted Metal on the PlayStation, I think it was a really, really good show. Anyways, back to Confluence. All right, so once you have your table here, all you're gonna have to do is hit publish. Now, this is just an example, right? So you can obviously build on this and make it way more complicated, but you're gonna need a page that has this information. But we're not quite done yet. After you have your, obviously your page macro, and then you put a table in your page macro, and then you've done the, the table with the settings and the configuration, the formatting that I just showed you, there's one last step you gotta do. And you gotta come down here to the label, and you gotta add a label. So in this one, I'm gonna do twisted metal, and hit enter. And this is going to be the label that's gonna be applied to this page. Okay, now we're basically done with the foundation. This is essentially everything, all these little micro steps that I just walked you through is to do step one. And this is what's going to allow you to create your first page property, right? And what we're gonna do with the report is we're gonna go and aggregate multiple page properties. But in this case, I'm only gonna show you how to do one, 
but essentially you would do what I just did with multiple pages over and over and over. And then you, you put it all together with the page property report, which is what I'm going to show you next. Are you struggling to get your points across in a meeting? Have you tried showing your team a diagram instead? Glippy makes intuitive drag and drop diagramming software that helps teams of all types collaborate more effectively. Glippy's deep integrations with Confluence and Jira make it the leading Atlassian diagramming tool, allowing users to create everything from technical diagrams to describing software architecture to basic mind maps to capture ideas. Give our friends over at Glippy some love and start a free trial using the link in the description down below. So to put it all together, you're going to create yet another page and you're going to come up here and you're going to go to page and you're just going to do like my page property report. Now I'm going to hit publish because what needs to happen is this report, although it can sit wherever it wants, you want to set it up in a hierarchical format. So right here, if you look on the very bottom left corner, you can see that my page report that I'm going to do here is nested, right? And I think that this is okay, but just from an organizational standpoint, it doesn't make sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this guy all the way back up to the top so that this my page property report is at the top level or is at the part top most highest part of the tree. And then I'm going to grab that miss. This is my title and I'm going to nest this one underneath the report. So essentially to recap, I have the page we did earlier just a few moments ago, and then I have the page that I literally just created. And now that page is at the main hierarchy and that second page or that first page that I made is now down below. So this is the way I want it. Again, I don't think you have to set it up this way, but it just reads better. And I think the less confusion you can add to users, the better. But again, try, try to do it however you want, but this is the way I'm going to recommend where you actually nest these pages in, in a way that just reads a little bit easier for your users. Anyways, once you have this, right, you're going to notice you have your page property here, and then we're going to go to the report. So now go back into the report page, click the edit pencil. And this time we're going to click the plus sign again in the body, right? Not in the title, but in the body, we're going to click the plus sign and we're going to do the same search for page. But this time, rather than clicking on page properties, we're going to select page properties report. Once you do that, you don't want all this because as you can see, this is going to pull everything. And as you can see, it's pulling everything that has a page property. And this is why I'm saying like, it doesn't matter how you set it up in the hierarchy, all the movement of pages that I just did, because it's going to go and find it. But because I, again, I'm just trying to be friendly to the user. I don't want them to go digging for the reports. Reports should really be at the top and then all your nested pages should be below it. But again, it'll take it from wherever, wherever the pages are. It doesn't care. But we are going to modify this ever so slightly. We're going to click on the edit pencil here and we're going to tell it that we only want the pages that have twisted metal in them. You additionally have the options to add filters. So you can say like if it's made by a specific creator or if it includes a specific parent or with a specific title. So those are options there. And you also have real options, which are allow you to reference a page property. Um, so in case you have multiple page reports on one page, you're going to want to give them each a unique ID so you can find them. You can give it a title, column, heading, column to show, number of items to display, your sort by, and then a couple of other options. Now, I usually leave those all blank, but I do recommend you play around with them. And once you're done with that, you can optionally click this preview button. And then once you're OK with this information, you click the save button. At this point, this page properties report is going and grabbing any page property that has that twisted metal label on it. So if it doesn't have it, it kicks it out. And as you can see from earlier, this used to have four or five items in it, but now it's condensed to just one, as you can see here, because only one report hits that item. Now all you got to do is hit update and that's it. So, so now all the column headers that you had in your table come over here. And as you can see, they're going to be like listed in a row. And so now you can see all that data. And if you have tagged people, these be links to people. If you had Jira issue, you'd be able to click on those and take you over to Jira. So it's really, really dynamic, really, really cool. So just to recap on what you need to do, you need to put a page property in a page anywhere you want. You're going to put a table in it and you got to format it the way I showed it to you. Two, you got to publish that and put a label because if you don't put the labels, it's just going to go and it's going to be a mess. It's going to give you everything. So you want to be very, very prescriptive here and add labels so that you can not bring in a bunch of extra work that's not required or that you don't want to see. So make sure you add those labels. Then the next step is you're going to want to create a separate page for the report, 
right? And that's where you're gonna go at the page properties report macro and then go back and reference your label and then everything's gonna look exactly the way it looks on my screen. So anyways, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. I really do like the page properties report. I think it's a really cool feature and functionality of Confluence. And so if you haven't used it before, highly recommend you use it because it just aggregates data from various places and gives them to you in one spot. And I think it's just a really cool feature. And so get a little creative with it, see what works, what doesn't work for you and your team. But that's essentially how you make it. Is your team having a hard time collaborating? Then you need to try out Glippy for Confluence. Collaboration has never been easier. Glyphy for Confluence allows your team to work together in real time, making edits, providing feedback, and driving productivity. Say goodbye to version control headaches and hello to seamless teamwork. Show our sponsor the power of the internet and start a free trial to Glyphy for Confluence using the link in the description down below. And if you found value to this video, make sure you smash the subscribe button. We are on the last less than 1,000 subscribers missing from our hitting our goal of hitting 10,000 subscribers. So if you made it this far and you're watching this video and you found value, make sure all you gotta do is smash that subscribe button, totally free for you. Drop a like as that does help out. Interact with this video in the comment section as that also helps out. And most importantly, make sure you check out the description down below so you can see all the links to my merch store and to my Udemy courses. That's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 don't need